Hello and welcome to Clean Fiction Audio, where you can find wonderful reads for the quirky and discerning book lover. This audio version of the popular magazine focuses on the best reads that are available in audiobook form from both the Christian and clean secular markets. For even more independent and small press books, visit cleanfictionmagazine.com and check out our most recent edition. Contact information for reviewers featured in this episode can be found in the description. We hope that you enjoy these reviews and find your next favorite audiobook. A Clean Fiction Review by Brianna Wilkie of On the Run with a Supervillain by H. L. Burke. Superhero. Sean wants to get hitched, not framed. In his first year with the Department of Super Abled, Sean Park, aka Surge, has two goals. To prove to his team leader that he can fight villains with the best of them, and to find the perfect way to propose to his girlfriend, Katie. When a teammate ends up dead with evidence left behind pointing to Sean's involvement, Sean's perfect life is knocked for a loop. On the run from his own agency as well as villains, Sean must prove his innocence or lose his ideal future, and maybe his life. On the Run with a Supervillain is part of the superhero science fiction and multicultural and interracial romance genres. This book is available on Amazon as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Action. Once again, H.L. Burke delivers an action-packed superhero novel, worthy of the big screen or an anime adaptation. Hey, a girl can dream, right? Despite being a romance, there's plenty of classic superhero action to keep action fans hooked from start to finish. Nothing bloody or super violent here. Just a bunch of fun. Adventure. There's a lot of adventure to be had when one is on the run. Sean has to clear his name and avoid being killed. No pressure. Who can he trust, or can he trust anyone at all? There are a bunch of twists and turns along the way to happily ever after. It's worth the ride to get there. Romance. There's plenty of sweet romance to be found here for any romance fan. Sweet hugs and kisses galore between our main couple, Katie and Sean. The heat is turned up a notch or two this time around. Katie asks Sean to spend the night in her room. He turns her down. There's a scene where they share a bed. Nothing happens. Maestro is dating Rapids. He mentions they're sleeping together. It's all the sweet romance with nothing inappropriate shown on the page. Religion. There's nothing religious here except a mention of Katie praying for Sean's safety. Just like book one, anyone can enjoy the sequel. There's a bit of language, but it's used sparingly and it's nothing worse than what you would hear in a PG-13 movie. Final thoughts. Oh my word, I love this series so much, I can't recommend it highly enough. H.L. writes the best superhero books. They're perfect for fans of Marvel and My Hero Academia. Seriously, I can't recommend these books enough. And if you love these, you'll want to check out her supervillain rehabilitation project series as well. This book is rated G, will make you gasp. Both eyebrows will be involved in reading this book. For more specific information about this rating visit, the Levels of Clean page on our website. You can find H.L. Burke at hlburkeauthor.com. Her social contact information is in the description. A Clean Fiction Review by Amy Lynn McConaughey of Top Level Player by Joseph R. Lalo. The bad news? You died. The good news? You have an extra life. After a terminal diagnosis, Jazz had nothing to lose in testing a prototype brain scanner, right? Wrong. Dead wrong. Now she's locked in a digital afterlife called the After Image. How did she end up in this chaotic, post-life role-playing game? Is there a way out? She'll have to find some friends and gain some levels, but one way or another, Jazz is determined to get to the bottom of things. Top Level Player is a pop culture nostalgia fest by Joseph R. Lalo, combining the wit of Free Wrench and Big Sigma with deep pull references from the 80s and 90s. Top Level Player is part of the game lit and cyberpunk science fiction genres. This book is available on Amazon as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. This book was recommended to me by the lovely champions of AM Soma as being a good book to enjoy while waiting for the next book in the Age of Rentha series. Their recommendation did not disappoint. Action. This story starts off with a bang and doesn't stop running until the very end. Some may find the brain scan, in the beginning, a bit unnerving. 
but after that the violence and physicality are all video game related. If you are a longtime gamer with a love of the 80s and 90s, you will love the baddies, ninjas, and anime-themed bosses. There are a few instances of mild language. Adventure. The main character is literally dropped into another world that is created somewhat by the people in it. Real physics doesn't matter, and game physics reigns supreme. This along with the trope system gives the reader a very colorful and crazy world to enjoy. I personally would love to visit the after image while still alive, of course. Romance. There is no romance in this book. Religion. This book doesn't mention any kind of religion, but the entire premise may be difficult for some. Essentially, people pay to have their consciousness uploaded to a game after they die to extend life, in a way. I am a person who doesn't have a problem separating fiction and fact. So thinking about what that experience would be like was interesting to me. I suppose I made a separation. Well, their soul went to eternity and their mind was stored, sort of like an autobiography. A place where we can connect with the wisdom of those who have gone before us. That is not how the author plays this, but these thoughts allowed me to read on without being troubled by the real-world ramifications of this practice. That being said, the author uses the setting to ask questions that should affect us in the real world in his fictional setting. Questions like, Are we selling our souls by putting our lives onto the internet? Do you act more like yourself when you wear a character mask in a game? What would you do if you were given a second chance at life? All of these are rather deep questions being asked in a rather ridiculous and action-packed story. Final Thoughts This story was both fun and serious, silly and thought-provoking. Lalo's approach to a lost-in-a-game book was refreshing, to say the least. The complexity of the story and setting was wonderfully done and delivered big time in the nostalgia department, as advertised. Gen X and millennials alike will love this book. I look forward to visiting other worlds that he has created. This book is rated G, will make you gasp. Both eyebrows will be involved in reading this book. For more specific information about this rating visit, the Levels of Clean page on our website. You can find Joseph R. Lalo at bookofdeacon.com. His social contact information is in the description. This episode of Clean Fiction Audio is sponsored by the Clean Fiction Spring Edition 2024. In our Christian publication, you will find wonderful reads for the quirky and discerning book lover. Purchase your copy today on Amazon or at cleanfictionmagazine.com. A Clean Fiction Review by Amy Lynn McConaughey of The Choice, The Chase Runners Series Book 2, by Bradley Caffey. The chase is over. The world is freed but the law remains. In the aftermath of the chase, the world is divided. Struggling to maintain its chokehold on the population, the World Coalition broadcasts its persecution of the liberated, those who celebrate life free from the law, including Sheila Kemp, who is suffering the unbearable cost of telling the truth. Forced from the safety of their hideout, Willis and Perrin embark on a mission to discover a new set of friends in a rebel group known as the Underground. With the help of an informant known only as the Watcher, the two join a daring rescue in the heart of the capital of the Western Alliance, one that reveals the truly sinister intentions of the chairman. The mission takes a turn when the group is forced to make an impossible choice with consequences that could prove invaluable or catastrophic. The fate of the underground and the hope of the liberated might hinge on their discovery, one that might not only threaten the world, but also unravel the confidence in each other they've forged since the chase. The choice is part of the Christian science fiction and dystopian genres. This book is available on Amazon as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook, as well as at mountainbrookinc.com, Barnes and Noble, and Christianbook.com. The aftermath of the heart-pounding intensity of the first book has arrived. Action. There was slightly less action in this middle chapter of the series. This book took the time to expand on the loose ends left by the previous book and build upon them. It gave me the feeling of, the Empire Strikes Back, and don't expect anything to resolve. There are a couple of scenes that are not for the squeamish, but in general, the suspense is more mental than physical. Adventure 
There is a whole new world of political intrigue and earthbound struggles to discover in this book. The previously sheltered main cast must find their way in the aftermath of the chase. This adds another layer of intensity and continues to build the story in a very satisfying way. Romance The romance between Willis and Perrin is an adorable one, but don't expect there to not be trouble. There is nothing you need to worry about in the romance department. Religion Again, this story doesn't overtly mention religion, but beneath the surface of the story it can be found. Themes of loyalty, friendship, right and wrong are layered in this aptly named book about choice. The reader has been given the power to make their own decision about if they feel that Willis's choice was a good or bad one. Both sides are presented in great detail. This leans the book in a more contemplative direction than other action-driven stories, but don't be fooled. This is an action book. Final thoughts. I have never been one to overly enjoy the middle book is of the series, but this book was a necessary step to setting up what I hope is a spectacular ending. Within the framework of the story, the reader is meant to ask really tough questions not just of the characters, but of themselves. That is why this book is powerful. The author leaves it open for you to decide how to feel instead of leading you one way or another. It is a good thing that book three is already out because I would have had a hard time waiting for the ending otherwise. This book is rated G, will make you gasp. Both eyebrows will be involved in reading this book. For more specific information about this rating, visit the Levels of Clean page on our website. You can find Bradley Caffey at bradleycaffey.com. His social contact information is in the description. A Clean Fiction Review by Kate Willis Hopman of Apprentice by Kristen Young. The Love Collective is everywhere. It sees everything. Be not afraid. Apprentice Flick remembers everything except the first five years of her life. And for as long as she can remember, Flick has wanted to enter the Elite Academy, home to the best, brightest, and most loyal members of the Love Collective government. Flick's uncanny memory might get her there, too, even if it is the very thing that marks her as a freak. But frightening hallucinations start intruding into her days and threaten to bring down all she has worked so hard to accomplish. Why is she being hijacked by a stranger's nightmare over and over again? Moving to the Elite Academy could give Flick the future she's always wanted, but her search for truth may lead to a danger she cannot escape. Apprentice is part of the Christian science fiction genre. This book is available on Amazon as an ebook, paperback, hardcover, audiobook, and audio CD, as well as on Wandering Bookseller and Book Depository. I'm still a little bit shocked that I finished this book. For a couple of days afterward, it lived so rent free in my mind that I kept wanting to continue reading and being disappointed all over again that it was over. Fortunately, it is a series, so next time I feel like I can swing that much for an ebook, I am absolutely diving back in. This book drew me in immediately from the Amazon sample because cautious and kept me all the way through. I was really fascinated with Flick's memory and how it affected her life for good and bad. I can relate to that just a little bit, and it was really interesting to see her backstory slowly revealed, both in memories she'd filed away perfectly and ones she didn't recognize. I especially found her emotional responses extremely accurate and compelling. Side characters were one of the biggest pros and cons for me about this book. On the one hand, there were so many names that were so similar that I had trouble keeping them straight until I mentally pared them down to who was most important. Hodge, Chu, and Cam are my favorites, and I'm very invested in Sif's storyline. I refuse to believe it's over. A dorm leader. Akila is goals. The tech just absolutely blew my mind. I know it wasn't anything exceedingly original, but it was so seamless, fascinating, and easy to immerse myself in. My favorite scene was when they were running the engine room. The unique terminology was a little much at first, but I got used to everything except hater man. That just seemed to pull me out of the story whenever it was used. A very small complaint, though, in an otherwise highly enjoyable story. Altogether, I highly enjoyed this book and will definitely be reading the rest of the series. Content warning. Descriptions of child abuse, medical procedures, violent gladiatorial games, implied off-screen executions, claustrophobia, 
themes of medical kidnapping and education as indoctrination. Best quote, Why are you doing this? I say to my body. Why can't you just behave like a normal person? This book is rated G will make you gasp. Both eyebrows will be involved in reading this book. For more specific information about this rating visit, the Levels of Clean page on our website. You can find Kristen Young at chrisyoungwrites.com. Her social contact information is in the description.